No time for an introduction. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today we're going to be talking about this queef, Samuel and Dungu. This story was suggested by you guys, in particular True Crime Babe. Make sure to thank her in the comments. Okay, now Samuel was married to Lucy. The relationship was rocky and he was knocking her head between the washer and the dryer. One big reason why their relationship was not good was because Samuel, he was a jealous boy. He was out of this notion that Lucy was cheating on him with all the uncircumcised men. And I say uncircumcised because he had a, a, a real issue with uncircumcised men. We'll get more into that, but he was really abusive. He was very insecure. He made their marriage miserable. It got so bad that Lucy actually left the marriage and she moved. This Jigaboo had actually lived, moved to the same street that she was on. He just moved right down the street. Now, Lucy had a friend. His name was also Samuel. Samuel Kiru. Now, apparently, Lucy and Samuel used to go to school together, so they had known each other for some time. But they picked back up the relationship. I also want to pause real quick because she's like 24 and her man is like, what, 80? I mean, was it an arranged marriage? Because this old nigga looked like he'd been through some shit. Anyway, Samuel found out about Kiru and he was not having it. Especially when he found out that Kiru was uncircumcised. So now his heart is hurting because it's like, girl, you lied to me. You said you wouldn't mess around with nobody. And so he decides to let her know. Hello? Ho, the things that you've lied about. Even pertaining to your mom. You don't want them out. Okay. So first he started harassing Lucy. That man would pull up to Lucy's house, make her drop them draws, and then check to see if she was messing around with uncircumcised men. And I know I'm saying uncircumcised, y'all, this is literally what he was saying. Also, how do you know if, if he's uncircumcised or not? Can y'all tell this? I mean, I've heard that uncircumcised were more endowed, but I mean, I mean, I can't speak for nobody else, but I mean, I'm a, I'm a good two inches. But anyway, yo, she was telling him, she was like, no, I'm not messing around with nobody. I just know him. He's a friend. We went to school together. So now in December of 2017, Samuel had another driver also named Samuel, Samuel Mwangi. Is Samuel, is that common of a name over there? Because it's like three people in this story alone named Samuel. Anyway, so his driver, who's also named Samuel, was driving him around. Now, he was inside the car or the cab or whatever he was in, and he was upset, and he was just going off, and the driver was like, hey, what's going on? He tells the driver, Samuel, that he found out that his wife, because they were still technically married, was sleeping with another dude, also named Samuel, and that he was going to kill Samuel Kiru, her classmate, the person she's supposedly sleeping with. Now, one thing about Sam is he's a receding hairline man of his word. Because on December the 18th of 2017, him and a few other men rolled up to Kiru's mama's house. They showed up at the man's mama's house asking him, you know, where's Kiru at? Catch me outside. How about that? Huh? Catch me outside. How about that? Catch you outside? What does that mean? What I just said. Now he wasn't able to get Kiru that day, so he was just uncircumcised penis. Like it was bothering him. So he started harassing Kiru. I know y'all may think that he has a receding hairline, but it's not really that. It's just that he just focused on uncircumcision so much, the rest of his hair just moved to the back of his head. Now Lucy denied the affair. She was like, There is no uncircumcised penis heading my way. But that didn't stop Forehead from knocking her head against the wall. Lucy, she was like, you know what? I'm not going to be dealing with no abusive man. So Lucy, she resolved that she was going to end the relationship. Also, something that I forgot to mention, during this time where he's trying to get Lucy back, this man has a girlfriend. Yep, that's her right there. But he was accusing Lucy of cheating with uncircumcised boys. And once again, I keep saying that, but literally, that's what he was doing. He kept bringing up the uncircumcision. So obviously this man had a problem with it. A repressed memory, a weird week at summer camp. I don't know, but he liked them bananas peeled, honey. January the 24th, 2018. King of Foheads was still mad at Lucy. So he called Sam, the driver, and Sam picked him up, was driving him someplace. And once again, he explained to Sam on this ride here, he was like, my wife ain't finna be sleeping with no uncircumcised men. I mean, at this point, I'm thinking if they were uncircumcised, he would have been okay with it or something. So that same day, Forehead, Crackhead, and Nappyhead, they went and abducted Lucy from her home. Now, obviously, Crackhead, his best friend over here, his name is Wilson. 
obviously this man was circumcised because they drove Lucy to a place after they abducted her and he let his best friend R word her on the side of the street while his current girlfriend was just there. And then after he let his best friend do all that to his technical wife, they made her drink acid. They then got the same acid and poured it all over her body. She suffered 75% burns all over her body. They took some sort of rope and then they strangled her and they left her for dead in the middle of this coffee plantation and just left. And sometime later, just some passerby happened to find her and they took her to the hospital. The Kiambu Level 5 Hospital, as a matter of fact. Her family was notified and she was lucid. She was able to tell everybody who did it. It was my strange husband, Samuel Ndungu. The doctors did everything they could, but unfortunately, two days later, on the 26th, she passed away. And honestly, I would have wanted to as well. There are pictures of her that you can find, you know, after the incident, but I thought that was a little insensitive. And plus, I didn't want to just put it all on here. But if you want to go see, please do it at your own discretion. Now, these three assholes were arrested. And they got 90 years in prison, but it's only 30 years apiece. They were just sentenced on April the 5th of this year, so they'll be out in 30 years. If you or someone you know is being abused, please call this number right here. During my research, I discovered that in Africa, or at least some parts of Africa, it's a little taboo to talk about abuse if you're going through it. They consider it like airing out your dirty laundry. But here in America, baby, we're going to tell it all. So I encourage all of y'all to do, if someone spit on you... <laughs> Please call somebody. Do not deal with abuse anywhere. So yeah, rest in peace to Lucy and uh, that's crazy, right?